Today on episode three of the Play Guitar Podcast, I talk about the one thing guitarists of all levels need to work on, how to better open up that fretboard. We've also got guitar news and another installment of Making the Band, so stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode three of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that'll help you become the guitarist you always wanted to be. Uh, On today's episode, we're going to tackle a huge subject called the fretboard. Um, I remember all those years ago when I first started playing guitar, uh, I had a tough time understanding how the fretboard worked. I'd learned new songs, and I was using new places on the guitar, but I really didn't understand what I was doing, why those those parts of those songs worked that way. By using tablatures, easy enough to get me playing in those areas, other than the open position, which I was pretty good at at that point, um, I was just playing by numbers. I was memorizing the songs by putting a finger on a certain string on a certain fret. I really didn't know what the notes that I was playing were, And I sure didn't know the reasons why these notes sounded good together. So today we're going to go over the things that uh, different guitar players need to know uh, to open up the fretboard. Uh, The first one, you know, we're going to talk about what beginner guitar players need to know right off the bat. This will save you a lot of pain, a lot of confusion. Uh, We're also going to talk about um, intermediate guitar players. Uh, I call them functional guitar players. A lot of them have a good ear. They've worked on their ear, but they really don't know what they're playing. This can really help intermediate guitar players understand what it is that they're playing, uh, how the fretboard works. And we'll also touch on advanced players. Usually advanced players will, will understand most of this stuff. They have a good understanding of how the fretboard works. But advanced players that I've found that I've helped out, they get in a rut by doing the same things over and over and over again. So we're going to give some tips for advanced players to get out of that advanced rut that they've been in. Uh, So let's talk about what I've been doing lately. Uh, I've been working on a series of blog posts and I'm really proud of them and I want to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, From teaching my classes over the years, I've started to see patterns in the questions that students ask me. Even between the levels of beginner, intermediate, and advanced, I'm I'm getting a lot of the same questions. Uh, I'm starting to realize that people are missing some foundational information these days. Uh, These are some skills that guitar players have worked on back in the day when I was teaching a long time ago and that they, when they understood these things, it helped them move forward. We've got a lot of problems with people moving forward on the guitar right now. I don't know if it's a sign of the times or just how people are learning guitar today, but guitars are just missing a lot of foundational ideas and they're not hard to understand. They're pretty easy, uh, but they're not quite as, they're not as sexy as learning new songs or buying new guitars or gear. But let me tell you, once you understand these few key things, your guitar playing will start going in the right direction. And the things you'll be able to play because of that are going to feel really cool. It's going to get really cool really fast. So I decided for my first bit of content I release, I'm going to share this information I've been working on with my students in my classes. It's been a lot of fun getting it all out and putting it out on the blog post to you. And you can check out all these blog posts at PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Uh, just scroll down to the blog section and there'll be the, the first five blog posts. Uh, even better, I have the idea of combining all of these posts eventually into a free ebook that you can download from my website. I've, I've got a few more posts I want to finish. Uh, once I do, I'm going to combine all these blog posts into an easy to read and very valuable ebook that's you know going to be free for you. Just come to the website and check it out. And I'll let you know about that as the, um, as the episodes go on. Uh, but for today, let's check out the blog post that comes with this podcast. It's called how do I learn guitar notes on the fretboard? Uh, like I said, go to my website and open that up. If you're by your computer, let's go ahead and get that post up and uh, you can go along with me. And what I'm going to do is 
on the podcast is kind of an accompaniment to that blog post. I thought this would be pretty good because in a podcast I can open up a little bit more about these and maybe share some stories about, you know, or something that I noticed from a student or something of mine that it might help you relate to this information a bit and might let it stick in the, in the noggin a little bit better. Um, and don't forget that after this section I have guitar news and I've also got a new song idea I came up with I was going to share with you on making the band. So here we go. All right, so why is it so important to know the notes on the fretboard? You can just learn from tablature and just put your finger on the fret that it says just by a number, and you can learn your bar chords and slide them around. Um, But why would you actually need to know the notes on the fretboard? Even with scale patterns, you learn these patterns. As long as you know what the first note is, all the rest of them work out. Why would you need to know what all of those are? Um, Having a solid understanding of the fretboard helps all guitar players, beginner through advanced. It helps you speed up your progress on the guitar tenfold. Also, it builds confidence. Uh, I've seen this in students after learning the notes on the fretboard. It is a confidence booster. Uh, if you know what you're playing, you you start getting adventurous. You can come up with some really cool new stuff. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I loved learning songs on the guitar. After a point, I realized something I could copy these songs, but I had no idea why these songs worked. Um, That wasn't a problem when I was just at home learning songs, but where it really hit was when I joined my first band. They all played original songs. They wanted, all the other guys wanted to play original songs. All I knew were riffs and licks from songs that I had learned. They were useless in this situation. I couldn't play other people's guitar parts in their own original songs. I had to figure out the how and why of music and I needed to know this fast. Uh, That's when I started to learn about the tools I needed to make my own music. Scales, chords, rhythm, all all those kind of things. But one thing became very clear. I had no idea how the guitar worked. All I had learned on the guitar at this point was tablature. I knew to play, I could play a certain string on a certain fret, and, and that's it. I didn't know the names of the notes, or the chords, or the scales I was playing, I needed some help. If you're anything like I was, this is for you. I eventually learned that understanding the guitar notes on the fretboard, it's not very complicated. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Once you understand a few ideas, this will make sense to you. The the first thing we're gonna talk about is the alphabet of music. This is very basic stuff, so just bear with me if you understand this. But some people, you would be surprised, some people who didn't understand this. Um, when you talk about notes on a guitar or any instrument, we have a common language and we're going to use the alphabet of music. It's very simple. We just basically use the first seven letters of the alphabet to represent our notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's it. Um, those notes happen to be all of the white keys on the piano. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Once you get to G, it starts over. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. Well, when I say what's that's it, that's not really the whole picture. There's also some notes called, you've probably heard of them, sharps and flats. And those are the black keys on the piano. Those are the other notes, the in-between notes. Um, they're shown with symbols. A sharp has a little hashtag next to it. If you saw the note A sharp, it'd be A with the pound sign or the hashtag or the number sign, depending on how old you are. Um, and basically what that means, it's one fret higher than an A. So that's kind of, I remember in geometry class in grade school, we had the greater than and less, less than signs, that the alligator mouse, they called them. Um, basically, a sharp means whatever note that is, it's one fret higher or a half step higher. Uh, the other symbol that we sh- use to show an in-between note is a flat. Flat notes usually use a small B as their symbol, and they sound one half step lower than the written note. So if you saw an A flat, that would be one fret lower than an A, or a ha- you could call that a half step lower, one fret lower than an A. So with, those, with that information, we could figure out all the notes on the single string. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we have our in-between notes, the black keys on the piano, A sharp, 
uh, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all the way from the uh, the open A string all the way up to the 12th fret. That's where it repeats. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. So if you're going to have a note in between every, uh, an extra, a sharp or a flat in between every note, I use sharps here. Uh, you see, we started with A, then we had A sharp, and then we went to B, okay? Then we went from B to C. That's important right there. That B to C is a uh, called a natural half step. Those are the two notes that are right together. If you look at the piano, most every white key has a black key in between them, except for two places. The first place is B and C. Let's continue up the A string. So we had A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So E and F are also together. They have no note in between them. So that is our other place that we have, our other natural half step. B and C and E and F. They don't have a black key on the piano. On the guitar, they're right next to each other. There's no note in between them. Um, so let's also talk about the sharps and flats. One more little part about that. The When we talked about A sharp, that note can also have another name. So A sharp, like we said before, that's one step, half step higher than A, one fret higher than A. That's a, The note is an A sharp. But it, that note can also have a name. Because it's higher than A sharp, it's also lower than another note. That would be B. The next note is B. So A sharp is also a half step lower than B. So we could call that B flat. They're the same note. Sounds exactly the same. But it's above A, so we could name it A sharp if we needed to. Or we could also name it B flat if we needed to. Uh, there's different reasons why we, we would call it an A sharp or a B flat. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, so having all this information with our sharps and flats and our natural half steps, we're going to have a formula. And here's our formula to figure out any note on any string. All of the notes on the guitar have a sharp or flat note in between them except for B going to C and E going to F. So give it a try. Pick up your guitar, pick any string, start with whatever note that is. Let's say the D string. We have D. D sharp will be the first fret. E would be the second fret. And then the third fret would be F. That's one of our places. E goes to F. And then the fourth fret would be F sharp. Fifth fret would be G and so on. You could work your way all the way up to D string. So at this point, you should be able to figure out any of the notes from the open position to the 12th fret if you just take your time. It takes a minute to count up from those notes, but you can do it. As long as you know the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you also know that there's there's sharp notes in between them, and uh, A, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Those notes could also be called flats if you needed them. We'll get to those later. And then there's two places that have natural half steps, B and C and E and F. Okay, so that's not so tough, is it? Uh, those are, you know, figuring the notes out on the A string, not too tough. Uh, if you need a visual for this, go ahead and take a look at my blog post. I've got... And it's a, you know, about, I think it's about halfway down the page. Um, it's a guitar neck. It has all the notes on the A string and it shows you in yellow where the B and C and E and F are. It kind of helps you visualize this a little bit better. The next thing we need to know is that the fretboard repeats itself after the 12th fret. So what happens on the 13th fret and higher? So if we go on the A string, we worked our way all the way up to the 12th fret, we get another A. That means we're starting over. It would be A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. A ends at the 12th fret. 12th fret is where those double dot, dots are. So what happens after that? It's easy. You just start over again. The 12th fret is the same as the open string of the guitar. That's why most guitars have those special two marker dots at the 12th fret. That should show you that it's special. It's a special fret. Um, so just start your formula over at the 12th fret again, and you'll keep going. So if A is at the 12th fret, 
one higher than that is A sharp, that's the 13th. Another higher than that is B, that's the 14th. And then we have C, that's the 15th, where B and C are together. Um, so you just take that same formula, start it at the 12th fret, you can make your way all the way up. Also, you'll notice um, that we have the other marker dots on the fret. You'll see a dot on the third fret, the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and the ninth fret, those odd frets. Um, and then when you get to the 12th fret, you see the double dots. And what we just said is that's where we start over. If you look up three frets higher than that at the 15th fret, you'll see an, a new set of dots on the higher frets. And that's the fifth, let's see, 12, 13, 15th, 17th, 19th, and the 21st. Look very similar, don't they? They look just like the dots on our lower frets. So one thing that you might do is say you play something at the third fret and that's where that first dot is the same note just an octave higher a higher version of that note would happen at the first dot above the above the 12th fret that happens to be the 15th fret so if you play the third let's say the low e string you play the third fret over the low e string boom and then you play the the 15th fret where the first dot is above the 12th fret you have the same note a version of the same note Okay, so those are both G notes. We could work our way up there, figure out that's a G. G's at the third fret, G's also at the 15th fret. Okay, just a little trick to help you kind of move around the guitar a little bit better. Up to this point, we've been understanding how the fretboard works going up the neck, up the strings. But to really understand the fretboard, we also have to know how it works across from string to string. So let's take a look at the low E string. We're going to use our little formula and we're going to work our way up to the fifth fret. So open would be E. First fret is F. Second fret is F sharp. Third fret is G. Fourth fret is G sharp. And then when we get to the fifth fret, we get to an A. So at the fifth fret on the low E string, we have an A. That's also the same note as what? The next string. So if you remember your names, your strings, E, A, D, G, B, E. The, the fifth fret of the E string is the same as the open A string. Uh, you've seen this a lot, people tuning their guitars. They'll press the fifth fret down and then play the next string and they'll try to match those two notes together. Um, so you can also use this process on the next string. So let's, let's try it going up the A string. We've got A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and then D at the fifth fret. So the fifth fret of the A string is a D that just happens to be the same note as the next string is the D string. They, they match each other. Okay. So you can do that with all the strings except for one place. There's always one thing that just doesn't work out quite right. And that is the G string. So if we use our formula on the G string, we'll find that when we get to the fourth fret, that will give us our next open string that we can, that are the same note. So if we open, stay on the G string, G, First fret is G sharp, second is A, third fret is A sharp, and then the fourth fret is B. That B note is the same as the next string, which is a B string. Um, so that's the one place where it doesn't work out just perfect. On the G string, you only go up to the fourth fret. But understanding how these strings overlap is really essential for how we're going to build our chords and how we're going to build our scale. So it's something you really need to know. That brings us to our last bit of essential information uh, for today. That's simple octave shapes can help unlock the fretboard. One of the easiest and most common shapes on the guitar is the shape of an octave. Uh, the octave shape gives you two of the same notes, but the other one is the next higher version. Uh, this this shape is the same as the outside notes in a power chord. If you if you know power chords, um, the low note and the high note of a power chord are an octave shape. Uh, and like I said, check the blog post out. I've got some images of these octave shapes and you'll see they're pretty familiar if you're familiar with power chords. Um, one of the great uses for this octave shape is for figuring out the notes in the middle of the fretboard. Uh, the string most players know the best is the E string. It's the string that most often contains the root of the chord. A lot of players memorize the notes on the low E string and then they leave it at that. But if you use your octave shapes, it can show you what the names of other notes are in the middle strings, on the D string maybe. So uh, let's take a look at this. So we're gonna take a octave shape on the low string. 
let's start at the first fret. We'll put our first finger on the first fret. That's an F note. And what we're going to do is we're going to go two frets down and two strings over. We're kind of making the outsides of a box. Two frets down and two strings over. So that will give you an F note at the first fret on the E string. And if you follow that formula, two frets down, two strings over, that will also give you an F note, but this time it's on the D string and it's at the third fret. So we have our first finger on the first fret of the E string and either your third finger or your pinky on the third fret of the D string. That's an octave. Those are from F to F. We can use that same shape on the next set of strings. So if you just slide it over one string, our first uh, fingers at the first fret of the A string, that'd be an A sharp. And now our pinky has moved to the G string on the third fret. That's also an A sharp, the same shape. Two frets down, two strings over. Now when we go to the D string, it's a little bit different. So if you move our first finger to the D string now, that becomes a D sharp. Once we get to the D string, we have to change this. We have to go up three frets. So it's three frets up and two strings over. And that'll give us our octave shape off of the D string and the same off of the G string. If we move our first finger to the G string on the first fret. That notes a G sharp, one higher than G, right? That's the first fret, G sharp. Now if we go up three frets and then two strings over, that'll also give us our G sharp. Okay, so that's the, that's the way we can use these octave shapes. If you know a string, if you're really familiar with the low E string, well, you'll now if you know this shape, you'll know all the notes on the D string. It'll give you those notes. Same with the A string. If you know the A string, use your octave shape and you'll know where your other, in this case, we use the A sharp on the A string, on the G string where all those notes are right there. So. Anyway, that's a little trick for helping you figure out the notes on the inside strings of the guitar. So for beginner players, that's some essential information. We're going to need this foundational information to progress farther along on the guitar. And it's great for intermediate players too. I've been pretty surprised how many intermediate players come to me in my classes and they, they don't really know this stuff. And it really... It's like a light bulb goes off over their head. It's a light bulb moment. And they see how the guitar neck works. And this information really pushes them forward on the guitar. But what about advanced players? Most advanced players are pretty good with this stuff. They, they understand all the stuff, but they're still having a hard time getting something new out of the fretboard. That's what I, most of the advanced players that, that, I, that I work with, they are kind of in a rut. They're just doing the same stuff over and over again. I've got some tips for that. Um, stop being so comfortable. Spend some time doing things in areas you don't use as much. And I'm really talking about practice time. A lot of guys, when they practice, they just turn the guitar on, they just start playing. And it's pretty unstructured. Um, Start thinking about your practicing being a little different. We're going to try and split it up into two sections. you got your time that you spend sounding bad, learning things that you don't know. And we're going to do that for a set amount of time. And then we'll have a set amount of time separate from that, having fun, jamming, playing songs that you, you know that you know you can sound good on. But we need that time to practice things that sound bad. Uh, let's talk about Jimmy Herring. Jimmy Herring um, is a guitar player who just always seems to keep getting better and better and better. Do you think he got so good playing outside scales and using diminished scales overnight? No, he didn't. You know this guy's practicing. He's spending time working on things probably today, wherever he is today, in a bus, somewhere, a hotel room, or wherever he is. I guarantee you he's working on something that he's not quite ready for to, to release out to the public. He's working on some things that don't sound very good right now. That's how you get better. You need to work on these things. Um, so here's some examples of things that you could work on. Uh, say that you play all of your scales in the you know with the five patterns. Well, try learning the seven. Uh, say the major scale in the seven patterns, you know, the one that's three notes per string, or even go 
take a look uh, look up Pepper Brown and look up his uh, the 12 scale patterns a scale pattern for every scale on every fret um, you could also spend more time with symmetrical scales they use the fretboard in a different way your diminished scales on your augmented scales that's what I'm I'm doing a lot with augmented scales now because I realize I don't use them very much and it's a good sound I can use those. So uh, once you start working with these symmetrical scales, they, they work out a little different on the fretboard. You'll see that. Um, spend time on your chords. Learn some new chord voicings. Uh, most people, you see these guys playing really incredible leads, and they're still playing triads and <laughs> power chords and stuff. Learn some, you know, some chords with ex extensions in them and try and learning them in different positions. Um, you know... Th those are some things, some tips, and I'll, I'll get more into, I'm going to do a whole podcast on helping players get out of ruts and understand their fretboard a little bit better. So my conclusion to this is that no matter where you are on your guitar journey, there are things that you can work on to open up the fretboard a little bit more. Here's the secret. Here's what's so great about the guitar. Ready? It never ends. There's always something to learn. There's always someone you can learn from who approaches the instrument completely differently than you. That sounds like it could be frustrating never getting to the end of something, but it really isn't. To me, learning the guitar is very rewarding. These small achievements feel so good, and when you break through and get to a new level of playing, you just get more focused and more ready to move up to that next level. It's immensely rewarding, and I encourage you to move forward and do it with me here on the guitar. This is Guitar News. This is my weekly time to report on the wonderful and sometimes hysterically dysfunctional world of guitar players. Uh, this week, I got lucky. Uh, I went. I usually go to a bunch of different sites and pick out some guitar articles to to bring to your attention. Today, I just had to go to one. The very first one I went to is Guitar World, and they had tons of new new stuff. So let's go through it. The first article I want to talk to you about is called Tommy Emmanuel Premier's new Jangology video. I like all styles of music. I like all sorts of different stuff, and uh, Tommy Emmanuel is one of my favorites. And he's also playing with one of my favorite jazz players on this. And I'll get to that in a second. I want to read a little bit about this. He's um, he's premiered the music video for Jangology. The song's taken from Emmanuel's upcoming album, Accomplice One. It's a duets album. It's got a lot of cool people on it. Let's see what they got. They've got Jason Isbell, Mark Knopfler, Ricky Skaggs, Rodney Crowell. But this song is pretty neat. And if you watch the video, you, video you'll really like it. Um, it's he recorded it in Cuba, which is kind of new. And he did it with Frank Vignolo and Vinnie Rinolio. And they did an arrangement of his old Django Reinhardt song. Uh, it starts off a little slow and then it starts swinging in the middle and some really cool, cool uh, lead parts going on in there. So go ahead and check that out. And like I said, you can see these all at Guitar World if you want to. But I'll have the links to this in the show notes. Really neat. Okay, the next one, <laughs> Judas Priest premiered another, uh, their new song, too. It's called Lightning Strike. I'm going to take a listen to it right now. Okay, very cool song. This is really great. One of the things I love about 2018 um, is you really get to see some folks out there that I, you haven't seen in a long time. Judas Priest is touring now. Uh, looks like I'm looking at their schedule now. They're... A lot of uh, Eastern United States going on. Some, some uh, what's it? Well, Milwaukee and Green Bay. Some of the Midwest, and then, then they're going out west. So this is between uh, this is between March and May in 2018. So Rob Halford sounded great singing on this. Um, it's it's got a classic metal kind of sound to it. I really like so so uh, check that new song Lightning Strikes out. I think it's from a new album called Firepower, and you can check that at Guitar World site or on my. I'll have a link to it in my show notes. Okay, the next set of music news here we have the Stray Cats are to re reunite for Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Weekend show, and on that's going to be on April twenty first, and it's the first time that they've appeared together in ten years. Uh, 
awesome rockabilly stuff. And it looks like they're going to be at the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Weekend. And that's a huge rockabilly uh, conference. Looks like they have all sorts of stuff, vendors, pool parties, DJs. If you can make it out there, that sound, if you're into that kind of stuff, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. They're talking about the Stray Cats and how they're thrilled to get back together. And I'd like to see that. I'm probably not going to be able to make it out to Las Vegas, but I'm going to wait to see that on YouTube. I'm sure it'll show up on YouTube somewhere. Okay, this next one we're going to file in the very interesting section. Uh, Gibson, Gibson Guitars will not attend NAM this year. That is big. According to reports, the guitar giant will skip NAM in order to focus on the Consumer Electronics Show, which will take place from January 9th to January 12th in Las Vegas. Gibson's not going to the NAM show this year. It says here the guitar giant will instead reportedly focus its efforts on the CES show, which will take place from the 9th to the 12th. Okay, it says it moves on the heels of its decision to end development and production of Cakewalk products. This This podcast is right now being recorded with an older version of Cakewalk products. Something Gibson said would not help the company better align would help the company, excuse me, better align with the company's acquisition strategy that's heavily focused on growth in the global consumer electronics audio business under Philips brand. And it says last October, the company put a 127,000 square foot factory in downtown Memphis up for sale. Oh, Gibson, what's going on? Don't tell me. Oh, well, anyway, so it looks like they're not going to be doing cakewalk products anymore, which I didn't buy any of their Cakewalk products. They've got a new pricing scheme, kind of, you know, uh, uh, I wasn't really into that. I'm still using Cakewalk X, Sonar X3 producer. That's what I record on, and I'm happy with it. Uh, but looks like things weren't going too well for them. So I hope this doesn't affect their guitar production. It's not looking good. So we'll keep our eyes on this one. And the last article I want to talk about today is you can carry on your guitar. It's the law. And it's something to remember if you're traveling with your guitar. I have a lot of friends who struggle with this problem. And it looks like, let's see here, they have listed in 2012, former President Barack Obama signed into law the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 and they've actually listed the law and section 403 has musical instruments. Um, and here is section one, small instruments as carry on baggage An air carrier providing air transportation shall, shall permit a passenger to carry a violin guitar or other musical instrument in the aircraft cabin without charging the passenger a fee in addition to any standard fee that the carry carrier may require for compatible carry on baggage. Oh, so I would copy and and print this one out. So when you're getting on the thing, there's so many difficulties traveling with guitars lately and nobody wants to throw their guitar at the bottom of an airplane. I've had, I had a pedal board once us flying to Florida and it was a mess <laughs> coming out of that amp, that, that airplane. So uh, so here's something that, that, uh, it's a good thing to have. If you're flying with your guitar, copy and paste this out, bring it with you, show those people, Hey, I'm allowed to have this in here. Okay. So all those articles today were from guitar world. Thank you so much. Guitar world for putting up some good stuff today. It saved me a lot of time from having to search around for a bunch of articles. Okay. So stay tuned for making the band. Let's get into making the band. This is where I share with you each week every step it takes to go from scratch, just an idea in my head, all the way to a full out band with an album, website, promotional material, gigs, all that stuff. So I'm starting right now so you can see this all happen step by step. And where I am now is I'm still in the very first stages. I'm coming up for songs. Um, I like writing songs with the guitar first and build up from there. And what I've decided to do is I'm just, I've decided I'm going to demo 10 songs. So I just wrote down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. First, for each song, I just want a little snippet, a little initial idea. It could be just a, a part of a verse, part of a chorus or an intro, just something that will have the vibe of a song. Um, I really hesitated to share these at first because they're not meant to sound great right now. They're pretty rough. They're just basic ideas. Um, uh, and, but once I get to 10 short clips so I have an idea what all the songs are, I'm then going to take each song and work on them indiv- individually. It will, I'll work on the form, the melody, the lyrics, so that you can hear them go from each stage. I'm really happy I chose to share these with you because it's gonna it's gonna be great seeing you know the rough startings of these songs and then what they end up like on down the road how it goes from these little unpolished ideas and all the way down the line so today i'm going to share uh a, a new idea i came up with I, I'm, I'm a big fan of robin trower uh he he's kind of a hendrixy uh era guy who did that kind of stuff but it's really his own thing and i've, I've actually seen him play recently he's still out there playing this wonderful stuff and i wanted one of his style songs something of my own that that is like his stuff and so i kind of came up with this little idea last night and i wanted to share it with you right now So there it is. Uh, it, it, it sounds like an idea. I guess that will end up being like the intro or something like that. But I'm pretty excited to to, to uh, flesh that one out a little bit. I, um, I can kind of hear how the vocals are going to go in my head. I have some ideas and maybe some other parts. So I'm excited about that one. That's, that's kind of neat. So I wanted to share that one with you today. So we're about halfway through my clips, these little clips for each song each of my ideas for the new project. Um, And like I said, once I get through, get 10 of those that I'm solid on, I'll start fleshing out the songs, getting all the parts for the songs, and I'll share those along the way too. So let me know what you think. Uh, But be nice. Remember, these are rough ideas. They're not made to sound great. Uh, I'm just wanted to, to warts and all show you the whole process. So that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed putting it together for you. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show on iTunes or your podcast player of choice. Also, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me an iTunes review for the show. If you're interested in online lessons, go on over to PlayGuitarAcademy.com and join my early adopter list. You'll get news on the opening of the site and you also get an early adopter discount. So follow me on my different social media pages and links to all of them and with all the show notes and blog posts are at www.PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Thanks again and I'll see you in the episode.